I look back now and wonder, you know, why did my life almost turn upside down just after I accepted Christ into my life and I began to receive visions about my future? Because I observed, you know, I was in school, an engineering student, you know, and I gave my life to Christ and then just found out whenever I began to pray, it would be like somebody pressed play, you know, on the video player in my imagination. I began to see myself standing before people to speak, loads of people. And that was totally contrary to my nature because I'm naturally introverted and, and I was extremely shy. Okay, but this was what I was seeing in my imagination. The Holy Spirit was painting pictures and it happened when I prayed. But then from there on, it was like everything turned upside down. My uh, dad's business, you know, went down. Went through a difficult period that I would be in school and they would not even be able to send me money for, for weeks, you know. I, I would, I remember the time when I, I would go and buy a bottle of Coke and some biscuits. That was my lunch. That's how tough it was. Why? Okay. Why was it that time that would be so hard, they would be struggling to even pay rent at home? Why? I was studying civil engineering because my dad is a building contractor. I was going to work in the company. It was like I had my job cut out for me. Why <laughs> did the business have to go through such a difficult time? Why? The dream, the vision, the moment I took delivery of the future, I become a magnet for Satan and I had to engage in vision fights. <laughs> Why was it that during the first year of Daystar Christian Center, we found ourselves on the front page of newspapers in Nigeria on a Sunday morning? And it was bad news. It wasn't good news. It was bad news. Oh yeah? Oh yes. So, I got to church and then the secretary brought a copy of one of the major newspapers. Right on the front page, our name was mentioned. The previous day, okay, you know, two ladies had been found murdered. They were murdered Friday night into Sunday morning, into Saturday morning. And our governor at that time, Nigeria was under military rule at that time. The governor was moving around and we had this uh, compulsory cleaning up of the environment. We called it em environmental sanitation exercise. And the governor was moving around the state just to be sure everywhere was looking clean. And then himself and his whole party, and of course, <laughs> The governor would move around with the press corps, right, with the people from the media. And then they saw these two dead bodies, young ladies, on the road. Okay. And then they were trying to identify their identity. And one of them had in her bag a notebook on which she wrote her name and wrote Daystar Christian Center. And we had a prayer program. Friday night into Saturday morning. Ah, so we figured they perhaps were coming to church. And, uh, but people on that street heard when some people were making strange sounds in the night on that street. And then, so that's how the media reported it. Yeah, the media reported it. And <laughs> it so happened that a mother had been investigated in another state and they had found a skull in a church just some weeks before. And the media connected the two. Why is it that churches are being connected to occultic practices these days? And the name of our church was there. As I read the story, I sat there and shook my head. And of course, the, the lady's name, or one of the lady's names, you know, was there in the story, in the newspaper. You know the in remarkable thing? I took my eyes off the newspaper and looked at the letter that the secretary had laid on my desk. 
Is this a coincidence or what? It was a letter written by that lady whose name was on the newspaper. And she was writing there about how she just accepted Christ. And she was now feeling very uncomfortable where she was walking. That she wanted to leave. She prayed with her so she would be able to live in peace. So I said, Lord, what is this? We haven't even started. We're just starting. We were less than a year. We were just some months as a church. And here our name had gone all over the country for a bad reason. What do we do? And the Holy Spirit said to me, when you get down into the service, lead the people in prayer. Lead the people in prayer. Lead the people in prayer. Satan is afraid of you. He can sense how powerful this church is going to be, how many lives you're going to influence positively. He, he wants to give you bad praise even before you start. So lead the people in prayer. And he said, in this same place, I'm going to give you a massive harvest. Whatever it is Satan wants to stop, he will not be able to stop it. I'm sharing this to let you know, just in case you're wondering, why is my life going haywire? Why is my marriage experiencing such terrible attacks? Why am I having issues with my career? Why is my, are my finances going this way? I'm just telling you that when God gives you a vision, you get into vision fights. Don't give up.